back to story time with Miss H. And I am your host, Miss H. And today I wanted to tell you a story about Conchita the turtle. So Conchita the turtle was this little turtle that just happened to show up in my mom's house. My mom lives in a corner house. And I can honestly tell you she has a lot of land and plants and trees. And she has like an avocado tree, a mango tree, banana tree. Like she has all kinds of, you know, veggies and fruits that she's planted herself. So she has like this very wonderful garden that she tends to every day. It's one of her hobbies. And in her doing, you know, her little hobby, here shows up this little turtle, pokes his head out of the little dirt. And my mom immediately fell in love with the little turtle. Wow. So my mom took the little turtle into the house and it, we had it trained. Like she had it trained. I can't say we, it's not my turtle. So she had it trained that after a certain time, like late at night when it was like dangerous, she, the turtle would sleep inside. So it had like a little pan with water, rocks, a little palm tree. And at night they would bring it in. And they would run all around the house. I know turtles have a reputation for being little slow pokes. But Conchita was super fast and very playful. She used to love playing with you. She would peck at your shoes. She would like, like uh, waddle around. And she would chase you around the house. So she was a very fun pet to have. So this is why this story really hurts a lot. Because, you know, she was such a happy turtle. In the morning, her routine was my mom would wake up, make coffee, go outside, start tending to the garden, and she would leave the little Conchita outside, and Conchita would be, you know, hunting or eating bugs, whatever turtles do. Or she would dig herself in the ground. And then at a certain point, my mom would come outside and start saying, Conchita, Conchita, and Conchita would come running back to my mom. So this is a very well-trained turtle. And... My mom and my sister really loved her. So I went one week and I noticed Conchita wasn't like, you know, being herself. She was like in the pan, just like laying in there. So I asked my mom, hey, what's up with Conchita? I haven't seen her. So I'm thinking Conchita disappeared because sometimes Conchita would take vacation days. You know, she would like not come back that day. But she would come back the next day usually. She was really enjoying herself in the, in the dirt on the ground. My mom was worried about Conchita because her eyeballs had like this weird crusty thing on it. So I told my mom, look, I'm going to go to the pet store right now and I'm going to buy her some drops so we can take care of this now. I went to three pet stores and finally found the drops. They were $22 for like this little pack of eye drops. But I didn't care because I wanted Conchita to feel better. If I was Conchita, I would have appreciated the $22 eye drops. Then I remember going to my mom's house and I'm explaining to her, you have to put these drops twice a day, you know, the whatever the directions said. And I know my mom is very, very meticulous. She's very organized in that sense that she will put a timer on her phone and she'll remind herself, hey, it's time for the eye drops. Then I kind of asked my mom if maybe she thought she should take it to the vet and she we're kind of like old folk, like old country folk in the sense that it's not that we don't believe in veterinarians. It's that every time we've taken a pet to the veterinarian, it immediately dies. Like, it doesn't really get better. The medicine doesn't really work. And then we're stuck with the bill. But that's a story for a different episode. So Conchita, the next week I came to see my mom, Conchita was still kind of the same. You know, my mom was still putting the drops. So I asked my mom, hey, is she been eating? And my mom was like, well, you know, I don't really know if she's been eating. I noticed that the food is kind of still there. And I don't know. I, I really don't think Conchita was eating. So I already kept telling my mom in a joking way, you know. Like, now I feel bad about it. But then I would tell her, mom, this turtle's probably dead. It's probably dead. Like, you know, like... You need to take it to the doctor. You need to, like, see if it's alive. Like, I remember it would be floating in the water. And then sometimes it would turn over like that, like floating. So I'm telling my mom, yo, there's something wrong with this turtle. This turtle can't just be, like, hanging out. <laughs> 
So she tells me. Nah, so she likes to do, she likes to flow, she likes to relax. So this is where we come to the word denial. So denial is not to be confused with the Nile, which is a river in Egypt. It's like a corny joke people say. So denial, D-E-N-I-A-L, means you are not accepting the facts around you. So for example, if your mom's telling you that you need to brush your teeth, if your uncle's telling you you need to brush your teeth, if everybody around you, your teacher, your friends, are telling you you need to brush your teeth, and you're like, oh, I'm fine. It's for a reason. We're telling you, the people are telling you is because as a community, we want you to better yourself and brush your teeth, and we could probably smell your breath. So that's being in denial, right? So, if everyone's telling you, you know, to do something, most of the time there is some truth, some fact to it. So I was telling her there was something wrong with the turtle. My grandpa was telling her there was something wrong with the turtle. Even my sister was kind of like, I think something's wrong with the turtle. But my mom was living in denial with Conchita. So the next week, my sister happened to be hanging out at my grandma's house. You know, and I remember my grandma, she's a very emotional person, you know, she's been through a lot. So she, she was crying about this turtle. And I'm like, what are you crying about? What's wrong with the turtle now? And she's like, oh, she's not eating. She's not this. She's not that. I've had her, you know, my grandma actually has this noble thing about her, this noble trait that when she's like taking care of something she's actually observing it so she's one of those people that like she raised all of us so she really does observe and watch and stare at the turtle to see if it's eating so she tells me that the turtle's not eating and there's something wrong with it immediately i was like let me see this turtle right so i kind of like tapped at the arm and the arm would kind of like like it wasn't natural. Like, it kind of, like, like, it wouldn't really move. It was kind of, like, stiff. But it would only move as far as I would push it. So it would move, and it would kind of stay there. So I was like, there's something definitely wrong with this turn. Then I used my eyeballs to zoom into the face to see, you know, zoom. And when I look at the turtle's eyeballs, <gasps> gasp. To my surprise, there was nothing in there. So I'm thinking, Ooh, this turtle's eyeballs are gone? That's disgusting. And then when I tell my grandma, because my grandma can't see. My mom can't see either, but my grandma really can't see. So my grandma, yo, this turtle's missing its eyeballs. She goes, no way. And she starts crying. And then they're just crying all over the house. And everybody's crying. <laughs> Something in me, for some reason, tells me to touch the head. I kind of regret it now, but I remember touching the head and I couldn't help myself. So I touched the head and whoop, the head fell off. So today's story was about Conchita the turtle and living in denial. If everyone's telling you that turtle's dead, most likely the turtle's dead, you know? There's no medicine in the world that's going to make that turtle come back to life. So remember, always listen to adults and your peers and your, and your trusted friends. And love your pets. So today's moral was what? Denial. Don't live in denial, you know. Be truthful to yourself and accept the truth. And that's it. That's my story about Conchita the turtle. So thanks for watching. And now I'm going to end off with my little bye-bye song, right? You're still here. Hit that like. Now subscribe. Just one time. Watch again. Come back soon. That's the end. Till next time. Bye and have a great day.